and welcome to part two of my portrait tutorial. Yay! It's finally here. I had a bunch of stuff come up so I wasn't able to do it right away, but now I'm going to explain the hair and the moths and all of that. So let's get started. So I'm starting off with finishing up some of my details that I was working on before. I spray fixed it after I did about 90% of my details and went in and finished them up. And I taped off the rest of it so there's not spray fixative on the part that I'm layering now. And so I'm going in with the neck and kind of to reiterate the blending process, I start off with very light shadows that I block in and then I go on top with the colors that I want. I start blending with lighter mid-tones and then I finally go in with the darkest darks and the lightest lights. And using this blending process is just to make sure that you don't get wax buildup. Because I work with Prismacolor Premier Colored Pencils, and that is one of the biggest issues, the most talked about uh, problem that you get when you're working with this medium, is it is wax-based, and if you press too hard at the beginning, and you keep on layering on top, you're going to get a bunch of wax blooms. So that's why I really try to be soft when I'm blocking in where I want my values to go, and I build it up, and I start using more pressure, and that helps prevent those wax blooms. But I know that it's inevitable, that it will happen, and if you saw the first part of this video, it happened several times in the face, and I have two different ways that I combat that issue, and one of them is kind of when you're at the point of no return, and it gets uh, wax blooms in a very important area where you kind of just need to start all over again and get it right. I get the back of my pencil and I scrape up the excess wax and then I go back in and blend. And it's hard, and the first few times I did it, it didn't really work out too well. It's kind of something you need to practice with. But that is kind of an emergency go-to um, little method that I use. Also, I once I get built up, but I still want to add more details, I stop what I'm doing, and then I spray it with a matte spray fixative. I use Prismacolor's spray fixative. Make sure that it's matte because colored pencil does not go on a glossy surface. So if you use a glossy spray fixative, it'll be a, a big problem. Okay, so anyways, enough about the blending. I just wanted to recap briefly on, on what I, I touched base on in the first video. Um, so now I'm going in with a marker base for the moths, and this is the Prismacolor brush tip markers. They're double-ended. I usually just use the brush tip end, but I love these. The pigment is beautiful, and I set down a base for my moths because it saves so much time and I, I'm assuming you might be wondering why I didn't use that on the face or anything else with her and the only thing is it's good with flat shapes and with her I want to make sure I get those values just right so I, I'm too afraid to use marker base for uh, any of the figure I'm just doing it for the moss and the hair to speed along the process and you still get the same result at the end so I'm going in and I'm filling in the colors, nice flat shapes. I'm picking the basic color that I want to work with and then I go on top with my colored pencil detail. And I think it speeds it up twice as much as the time it would take if I just used colored pencils. This marker method leads me right into how I did the hair for this one. There's many different ways to do hair, but for this one I did a marker base. And she had a dark brown hair. And I, it's hard when you're working with black with Prismacolor pencils because that's when the waxiness really shows up afterwards. Um, it might look good right after you finish the drawing, but then you sit and let it, you know, hang out for a couple of days and you come back and it has like this white film over it. So I tend to just work around that by using a black marker to get those really, really dark shadows that I want. Since her hair was really dark, I didn't want to deal with the black colored pencil so much. So I just used it for the details and refining the hair. But as you can see, I go on top with my colored pencil and I just put the individual strands in and make sure that it has that kind of natural shine that our hair has and simplify the darker areas. And I think it's really important to add the little wispy hairs and the little, you know, a few frizzies here and there because if you just do a perfect hair it's gonna look like it was pasted on 
And no matter how perfect your hair is or how much hairspray you put in or work on it, you're going to have little flyaways and little frizzies and I think that adds a nice little touch and it makes it a little bit more realistic. So I have all of my colored pencil detail in, but I realized that it was a little bit lighter than I wanted it to be. So another thing that I, I tend to do when I get the colored pencil a little bit too light on details like the hair is I'm basically going in with a glaze and it is the brown marker that I used before and I just lightly go on top of the colored pencil and it basically is like a, a wash over the top and it just darkened everything a little bit more and made it the value that I wanted it. After I finish up the hair, I'm going in now with the moth colored pencil details. And I'm kind of just working like, you know, 50% here, do a little details on the wings, go to the next one. I don't finish each moth 100% and then move on to the next one. I kind of noodle around on one and then realize that I want to do more details on the other one. As you can see in this part, I have the a piece of tracing paper over her face and that's just because the marker glaze that I did on top of the colored pencil isn't completely dry and I didn't want to smudge it onto her face so it's just regular tracing paper it works well when you use mediums that smudge a lot because I'm a very messy artist believe it or not when it comes to mediums that aren't you know as permanent as marker or colored pencil but anyways I'm going in and I'm doing these final details um, I, I believe after what I show you I go in even more and spray fix it and do even more details because I'm kind of OCD and I just didn't like the way it looked. Um, but you can see the colored pencil detail goes on great on top of the marker base that I put down and it speeds things along so much. So I'm doing a, a coat over the part of the details that I did and it seals everything in and gives me like a, a clean slate, a nice surface to go back in and do final little details. I remember before I started using spray fixative, I'd get to a certain point where it'd be built up with detail and I'm like, well, uh, I guess that's all the detail I'm gonna put on that. And I kind of just had to wrap it up and deal with the fact that it was, you know, done, even though I still wanted to go further with the details. So this definitely changed my drawings and allowed me to create a more realistic style um, that I was a little, a little happier with in the end. Um, I think that's the best part about using all these different mediums. It's exploring what helps you achieve the goal that you want with this drawing. And with the moths and the hair, using the marker base speeded along the process because I spent more time on the face and the skin. And then using the spray fixative to add more layers and you know with the gouache and everything I used a lot more mediums than I did back you know when I first started with color pencil because I realized they help each other out to achieve the goal that you're looking for and I love using gouache for like the whitest whites and you can see I do that a little bit with the moth up on the top of her hair and it just helps you get that really crisp white color that you want with some of the final details because sometimes white colored pencil gets a little muddied up when you put it on top. So that, I love using gouache for the whitest whites. And you can use other colors too, but it works really well for that. And I'm just going in with like the final little hairs and things like that. Um, I'm going to do a totally separate hair tutorial because there's so much that you can do with hair. Just um, the marker base with the colored pencil on top is not, you know, all that I do. I, you can do oil rubs and watercolor and pan pastel. There's so much you can do with color pencil and it helps you really get that look that you're going for. But, it, you know, you're not sitting there drawing every single individual hair and, you know, using all of your time on getting that texture that you want. So there are, you know, little easy ways out um, when it comes to that. So I'll definitely go in and explain that further. But for this one, yeah, I just did the, the marker base, the colored pencil strands on top. I kept the darks almost completely black because sometimes simplifying things helps it look more realistic in the overall image. And then I did that um, brown glaze on top with the marker, which helped me get the value that I wanted. So, um, <laughs> like I said, it's hard to explain everything um, so quickly, but that's how I worked on the moss and the hair, and I go in with some final little nitpicky details on her skin after I spray fixed it that last time, and that's pretty much it. I, um, 
I guess I am done. And this is my drawing and I decided to play around and add a background. Um, you guys can tell me whether you like it better or not with the white or the beige backgrounds. I can't decide yet. So it's kind of funny how that works. You work on a drawing and then a week later you decide to completely change something. Um, I guess that your work is never done when you're an artist. <laughs> I always think about it and go back and kind of, you know, change a few things with a lot of my drawings. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed. I'm going to do a tutorial next. I think I'm going to show you guys a quick little demo on all the different kinds of bases that you can do and compare them side by side. I think that will be helpful because I know that I would have liked to have seen that while I was figuring all this out the hard way. Um, so anyways, I will do that next. Uh, in the next upcoming week or so, I had eye surgery, so I'm in a little bit of recovery, but I will be back on my feet soon, uh, seeing very clearly, so that will be great. So anyways, don't forget to subscribe, and I will see you guys next time.